find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. Hey guys, it's time to get geeky, get techie. It is the Awesome Cast 267. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, ready to deliver the awesomeness to you. And with me, my awesome compatriots. First of all, from Studio B, he is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitters, bringing all that device knowledge and that Apple goodness and the Androids. And he's got the Androids as well, as we've talked I've been about. Trying to, I've been trying to be fair to all the operating systems, the, the Microsofts, the Yes, the, the androids, the the apples, the heck! I I think I even brought up BlackBerry not too long ago. So many so. fruits. So we got Kraus in the chat room, so he's going to keep us honest about the Microsoft stuff tonight. Uh, so uh, yeah, he's all he's all excited for the Microsoft announcement, but we'll get to that much later in the show. Awesome. And also with us, you can check him out this week on AwesomeCast.net and uh, a longer conversation on the awesome chat about the Ohio Linux Fest representing today on the couch in studio hello Hi. first <laughs> of all on our left vance kokendorfer did Howdy. i do it right <laughs> absolutely yes the secret is have as much fun as you think you're supposed to have with that name <laughs> i love it uh, and also susan rose uh both uh organizers co-organizers of ohio linux fest we'll get to that in a moment how you guys doing today Great. Doing awesome. great, yeah. Awesome. Thanks. Spending way too much time with me down here in the basement. That's for one thing. <laughs> uh, and down here in Mayhem Studios, Pittsburgh, PA, uh, giving you that flyover state of mind when it comes to your technology news. You can check out more at awesomecast.net. And include, like I mentioned, that interview we had with them and uh, other interviews we're having and having coming up. We're hoping to have a lot of fun with that in, in the near future. I made a lot of friends over the weekend, and I, and, and I hope to get them on my podcast. Hi, new friend. Can you be on my podcast? I'm sure is a <laughs> phrase that people love to hear. At, at, at a soiree of sorts uh but like i said please subscribe to us awesome cast on the facebook twitters and google plus and the, and the uh, facebook group as well and uh please also check out uh please subscribe to us on video and audio formats itunes spreaker stitcher iheart radio youtube uh we have a lot of clips especially when we're doing some product reviews or looking at certain pr- products out there uh and uh hopefully more videos we we want to grow the empire and also you can support us patreon.com slash awesome cast this will see business development um who are real people uh that- <laughs> <laughs> that 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 submit to this show and i know that because i had i had a uh a, a, an awesome lunch down at our friends of slice on broadway here friday um with uh with with, with a representative of thistle c and we had a very good discussion a lot of great feedback i need to talk to you about that later chilla uh so oh, okay. thank you very much uh that was really cool that was really cool to actually uh a, a touch base with a, a face-to-face with somebody who's uh, uh been contributing to the show and and and, uh, and please uh, go check them out um um if you have any coaching business coaching needs that's what these these people do um so uh this will see business developments up there in cranberry north of, north of the town and uh i got to learn a little bit about more about what they do so hope i can better represent them here in this section of the show so thank you very much for supporting awesome cast and you can too you, know, you get a state of the awesome cast and i'm still working on the goodies i i really want this other show does if edit they do if you do ten dollars a month they give you business cards and I would love to do that for our, for our supporters at some point here. So I think I might rework our, our levels at some point. Sure, I'll have time to do that. But anyways, I need a community manager or something, right? Uh, let's get into our awesome things of the week. But first of all, you know what is an awesome thing? Uh, the thing that we talked about here on our awesome chat. Uh, Susan Vance, can you give everybody a quick rundown? What, when, where, how is Ohio Linux Fest and uh, and 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 the quick skinny, a little bit of preview of the, that big interview we did. Uh, uh, why, why should people be interested in it? Yeah, High Linux Fest is coming up uh, next week, uh, Friday and Saturday, October second and third. Uh, we're going to be in Columbus, Ohio, in the Greater Columbus Convention Center. You can check us out at uh, OhioLinux.org, and we've got really two full days of activities going on. We've got on Friday, we've got our professional training running alongside our what we call our early penguins track and then on saturday we're going to have six full tracks of talk run, talks running simultaneously 
Um, we've got several, several other things scattered around in there. We've got the, the after party on Saturday. We've got so on, on Friday, we've got the, the Ally Skills Workshop. Uh, we've got the uh, uh, Birds of a Feather sessions in the evening. Uh, you can have uh, come and, and sign up and have, have dinner with our keynote speakers. So it's, uh, there's a lot going to be packed into one weekend. So check that out on ohiolinux.org and you can find, you know, look at the schedule and you'll see just what everything is, uh, what the whole lineup looks like. Awesome. Please go check that out. Great. All right. So let's go uh, down the line here of our awesome things of the week. Chilla, let's start with you here. Uh, let's get a uh, wireless charging for an iPhone. I, this has been your dream for years. So, so yeah, and I've played, I've played around with some products, so I'm interested to see how this one works. Cause it seems like they've, they may have done a pretty decent job of implementation. I've had ones where it's like a little credit card and you kind of wedged in the back of a case. And, and this is kind of what they're doing, right? And this, and this spigeon, um, they've already started to release their case information, um, their cases for the new iPhone 6s and 6s Plus cases start at $9.99, which is which is pretty decent for an iPhone case. Um, that being said, wireless charging case is only thirty bucks. Um, so I'm interested in this. Uh, I will probably pick this up if I can day one. If not, I will be ordering it right after. Um, I, as as using a, a Galaxy device with wireless charging. Um, I think there's some shortcomings, but I think it's primarily on the Samsung side that, that, the, that the issue exists. Um, the wireless charging with the, the Apple Watch um, and the uh, Android Wear, I have the, the Motorola 360, um, works amazingly well and is just makes life – it sounds ridiculous, I know. I don't want to have to physically plug in a device, but that being said, is it it just makes it so much nicer, and I'm sure – uh, the Krauss is saying how great and wonderful his Microsoft phone is because it has wireless charging as well. And it's interesting too, because I see more and more people, um, regardless of their device, um, whether it be Galaxy, uh, whether it be Android based, Windows based, whatever, I see more and more people coming into meetings and instead of bringing just a cord, they bring some kind of puck that they have to plug into their laptop um, that they then set their device on top of and it just charges. <laughs> that seems to defeat um, the purpose. What's that? That seems to defeat the purpose. It, it, well, I think it does to a point other than that's their cord. They don't actually have a physical cord for the device that it plugs in. That, that A lot of people I see start toting these wireless charging devices down. I want them for just around the house, right? I can set the device down on a, on a table with with one of these charge pads on it, and it just, it it works seamlessly. You walk over, you pick up the device. I don't have to to physically plug in or plug in or unplug a device from 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 the cord itself. Um, it's also nice for kids because you don't have to worry about them snagging the cord on something. Um, that being said, I, I think it. I, I think to me, I hope this catches on, and I hope in the next phone. Um, this is built in, but I think this is a step in the right direction. Awesome, awesome. I, and and I want to notice that you, I caught you here because this is a sponsored post on Nine to Five Mac. I see what you guys did there. I see. Oh, I didn't even I didn't even notice that. Ah, there you go. It's that uh, it's that uh, that 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 uh, paid content man gets mm-hmm. you every time. Although it's useful, so. I don't know. That's a discussion for a whole nother show, but uh, one I've been hearing a lot on my pack podcast, and I'm sure you have too as well. Uh, so go check that out. It was a uh, so so. Uh, we'll have that linked, of course, over on the website as well. Is this is this available right now? Um, I think I think it's available now. Obviously, it won't be very useful until Friday. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, it, that kind of leads me to the question of: so, what is your plan? Just real quick, what is your plan for Friday? Are are you going to try to to get in line? Uh, well, I actually um, got a reservation and then promptly scheduled a client over the same time my reservation was over in Somerset. So I will not be getting my phone on Friday, which means I don't know when I'm getting my phone. Uh, but my wife will be getting her phone uh, delivered through the AT and T Next plan on Friday, so there will be one in the house. So, so when you did your reservation, what, what did, 
So I guess here's my question is if, if, if I go get in line at the Apple store without a reservation or without anything, is there a chance I don't think, I'll get one? I don't think I you try. AT&T actually, store? if you go on the phone and through to the website, you can actually see how many, you can actually still reserve a phone as of two days ago, one day ago. Uh, and it's all 16 gigabyte models, at least for AT&T and certain colors. It's like there are still spots. So um, I think you will have better luck at the at t store as you usually do. So you, so there's, there's going to be no spur of the moment sales at the Apple store. Uh, I think it's going to be sorely limited. If they're not, if they're not letting me grab the model that I want as another reservation, then I don't think they're going to have it on hand or at least not in any, any, um, you know, extensive quantities. So, uh, no, I think you're better off. So you didn't reserve or, or anything, right? No, and now I'm going out there to, to figure out how can I reserve. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did it through the Apple App Store, or Apple Store app. Yes, that's the right order on the iPhone itself. So um, so I can just go in and tell them I'm Mike Sorg. What? No, what? Give me a phone. What? Well, if you have a reservation and you're not going to use it. Uh, I did look and see if I could transfer and see if I could send my wife instead. And they want you to bring two forms of ID. Uh, Whoa. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, when you're buying an $800 device in somebody's name and you might be going for the, cr- the credit plan like I was going to, yeah, they want ID. So there's that. <sighs> But anyways, we'll 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 see what happens there. So I'm going to be playing the hi. Do you have any of the iPhones in game for for a little bit here? And I have to do it at Apple Store because I want to do the Apple plan. So I don't know. I might just break down and just do the next plan and just give up. <laughs> I'll tap out. So. so so but but so here I'm in the store. I'm in the store right now, and the only thing I have is delivery options. Then they're out. Uh, you have to go through it. There's a, a certain, uh, uh, you have to do a rain dance with the app in one hand while pressing the, uh, buy the unlocked version with the other hand in full, <laughs> got a little hair on there. Um, and, and, and hope, hope it did the right thing. This has literally done something different every time that I've, I've tried to, uh, quote unquote purchase it. So yeah, I choose my thing. I choose my color and I choose my size uh, it, it's it's confusing. It's certainly confusing. Uh, you have to say, regardless, replace this iPhone for me on an AT and T account, pay in full, and then I think it says. Then you select Apple Care None. I do Apple Care None. No, now it's not even giving me anything. That's interesting. Can you talk about screen size? Because I have a friend who's going to go to a smartphone for the first time Mm -hmm. and um my friend has like big fingers and doesn't think they can touch on the screen so i think for that person a a larger screen would be better because wouldn't the keys be bigger probably for the most part um i don't know that six is big to begin with i was having a discussion with somebody the other day about how this 5s is like the perfect size for them Mm-hmm. And they wish you could still get the new features just in this size. And I kind of agree with that. Uh, now, and I, I kind of have the big thumb syndrome as well. Uh, how, I don't know. I guess it's their comfort level. And they're not going to know until they get to, uh, if, if available, I would get them to an Apple store so they can actually play with the sizes of the phone and mm-hmm. see what's easier for them. Now, going from not one of these smartphones to doing touch typing for the first time, no, it will be difficult regardless of the size of the phone. But still, if, if they can take a couple of minutes to, by the way, randomly uh, continue just popped up on on, on my st- store purchase. So I, I don't know what the deal with that is. So, um, so they're no longer, they will not be taking reservations until September 26th. Right, right. So there's that. Uh, which is good because hopefully you can just say, okay, when's the next one in and make a reservation and you're good to go and you don't have well, to. And I'm going to go on Friday down. morning and I'm, I'm going to pick up a device. You watch me. Uh, you probably will 64 gig device you probably will um fine you know i selected to go play with (laughs) drones instead of getting an apple phone i'm sorry um (laughs) but anyways uh on a screen size thing no i would say (coughs) if 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 you could get them into an apple store where they can get hands on to see what's more comfortable for them 
So, and and the good news would be too is from a from a six S six S plus perspective, mm-hmm. you're not you're not um, it's the same same physical dimensions, right? So so the dimensions of this the six S or six are going to be right, right. So yeah, that's what I'm saying. So like you you can get them into the store now to what mm-hmm. they have, and 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 physically like that phone is basically going to be the same thing as what they're releasing on Friday. So you can they, they can have a pretty good idea if they're aiming for the new phones here this weekend. Mm-hmm. So that would be my if, if they're close to an Apple store, I would recommend that. So does, does that answer your question a little <laughs> bit? At least like gets you in the right direction, well, right? Is it the same size as what I have here for what, the Note Four? Uh, what does the Note Four compare, Chilla? Uh, you the Note Four is probably more along the size of the Six uh, Plus. Okay, because the the Note 4 is in more in the five inch diagonal range. Mm-hmm. Um, hold on one second. So the iPhone 6 or 6S is 4.7 inches on the diagonal. The 6S Plus is five and a half inches. Um, and the Note 4 6. Um, the Note Four is five point seven inch screen, so it's more it's more along the size of the Plus line than mm-hmm. the than the regular line. So, if they put a, an iPhone five in their hand, they'd probably think it's tiny. Mm-hmm. So, bottom line is the biggest new iPhone is still a tad smaller than the Note Four. It's about the same size. Okay, all right. Yeah, roughly, roughly. Hmm. All right, Vance, do you have an awesome thing of the week? I've been sitting here trying to go over anything, and I, I can't. Nothing really comes to mind that uh, that's jumped out at me recently. So, okay, um, I'll, I'll take a pass, and As you can replug Ohio <laughs> Linux Fest at this position here if you'd like. Well, that's certainly I would pl- <laughs> qualify that as as being awesome. So, you know. As always, OhioLinux.org. Awesome. Go register today. Awesome. And uh, Susan, I, I know yours. I want to get to yours after the break here. In the meantime, um, I want to. Uh, so my awesome thing of the week, excuse me, <coughs> uh, is a, a, a startup weekend Civic Pittsburgh. I had the opportunity to take part in this weekend. Uh, and uh, more details, um, you can check out Sorgatron.com, basic Sorgonomics from this morning, uh, t- the Tuesday morning edition uh, for this week. And I-, I got a little more into uh, details of, of that. Um, and I'm actually showing pictures of all kinds of uh, all kinds of uh, thrival stuff from today. Uh, but some really cool companies um one chilla wants to gamify empty lots in the neighborhood i thought was interesting um and kind of they, they said kind of like a sim city but for empty lots that we can go beautify them and do some stuff with it so the, the entire weekend was again a startup weekend uh I, google was one of the sponsors i love 3m was a sponsor so there were giant post-it notes for us to use all weekend um and uh, I went to the the initial pitch session that they did uh, on Friday night. A really good event. It was really cool. Some of the ideas were like, "Hey, this is something that I came up with um, in the back of the room." Uh, but uh, and it was cool to see some faces that I've been uh, seeing up at Work Hard Pittsburgh, uh, where where we've kind of recently moved in as as kind of our our co working office space. Um, the winner involved Mint. I actually got to talk to the guy today uh, about this. Uh, one number one uh, first place in this, and and his thing is to become uh, create kind of a currency for volunteerism um so that's kind of the the quickie version of that um there's another one looking to actually quantify the data for pittsburgh promise which is a scholarship situation here in the city and uh, unfortunately if you have a caseload of like 50 kids you're not going to know they're falling behind and now they don't have opportunities for scholarships and everything that go with that uh so kind of the the idea that something will take that data and say hey check on your kid he's not doing good right now in attendance or school or whatever the case may be and then uh the the the, the both awesome I, I i i love both those companies ideas and i'm glad to see that they got what they are but the one with the special place in my heart is the be kind be kind pgh guys which uh, i think they changed their name to kind card and uh, i actually got the t- email with uh, the guy behind that 
here. Uh, their idea is a pay it forward kind of card situation. Now, you know, like a Where's George, where you have the number and you go to where'sgeorge.com and you can track where that number has been, where that, that, that dollar's been and everything. So kind of the same idea. You get a card, it's got a number on it, and you do a good deed for somebody, hold open a door, give them a card. They get to go on the site and say, yeah, somebody hold the door open. Now I got this card and they pay it forward. And you see all the deeds and track that are attached to that card. Wow. And it's trying to make Pittsburgh the kindest uh, city and it'll hopefully beyond a little bit as well. Um, you know, they kind of uh, broke off from the Pittsburgh side of things. It was really cool. So actually the live stream is available of both Friday night and Sunday night, um, the initial pitches and then the judging pitches that they did um, over. If you go to workhardpittsburgh.com, go to their YouTube channel, all those are up there, plus the streams from the Thrival Fest that happened today, including a lot of game gamification uh, 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 developer kind of talks, um, which I'm going to be checking in uh, when I get a chance. By the way, I've been, had a chance to uh, play a little bit with their their rig that they have on for live streaming. It's pretty freaking nice. There's some black magic stuff in there, and and uh, and and some. It's capable of 4K. I don't know when the heck anybody's gonna ever use that, but it's capable of it. So let's see if we can push the limits of this thing. Um, but the stuff looks really good, and it was really cool to see uh, that thing in action. Um, but, uh, but all those streams are up there. A lot of really cool ideas. Again, go check out Sorgatron.com. I, I have a lot more of my thoughts and, and, and actually serving as a role as a mentor of all things. Um, so really cool. Awesome, awesome event put on this weekend and go, uh, follow, uh, on Twitter. They're, uh, SW civic PGH. If you want to go back through and check out some of the events over the weekend, um, side awesome thing from that, um, I think her name is Lawyer Lori Lori Mitz. I'm gonna mess up her name. I'm trying to do it off the top of my head. You thought I was bad with names in front of my face, right? <laughs> um, but uh, she's actually uh, the head of the Data Initiative here in Pittsburgh, and you know, like the snowplow tracker stuff like that that we get to enjoy. The thing that'll text me, let me know when my recycling's tomorrow morning. That I always forget because I have podcast night the day before for recycling, so that's why my you can see the blue bags pile up if you're ever down here in the studio. Um, she had a really good talk about what they're doing to try to bring all that data together. Uh, their their data center is actually opening, I believe, the weekend of October 15th. Uh, kind of a collaboration they're doing with CMU. Uh, so keep an ear out for that. Also, thank if you're in Pittsburgh, thank the PGH311 Twitter account. That's one guy helping you out. OK, and 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 seriously, if you like have information, like I saw somebody, a, a friend of ours was saying, hey, can you tell them to stop blocking the meter in front of Ultra Bar, <laughs> for instance? <laughs> I, they seriously, uh, my parking issues, while I can't resolve the parking issues per se, it's out of my power and the city's power um, when, you're, when you're surrounded by by a holes as your neighbors. But uh, but they got me on. the they, they pointed me in the right direction to get on the phone with somebody to talk about my situation that was with the building department in for my ward in Pittsburgh. Um, and again, one dude and, um, and, and, and thank your local PGH three one one operator, please. Um, I think that's a thankless job that could use a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a, a positivity over there. So I, I, I know I put like three awesome things in one. My, my bad, my bad. <laughs> uh -huh. So Susan, I want to get to it's the awesome triple threat. Yes, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I just, there's just so much. It's just, just tandem. It's like, oh, yeah, and this. Oh, yeah, and this. Oh, yeah, and this. So we should just do like an awesome off should be a part of this. Or maybe like that can be our short videos or something like that. Okay. So I want to get to this other stuff. Uh, Susan, some van interaction stuff, et cetera. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to give a shout out to our friends that have been supporting the show, uh, supporting Pittsburgh Pizza uh, with pepper, Pittsburgh Pizza. Whoa, that, that screwed up. Man. I was doing so good at that. I was on a streak. Uh, Slays on Broadway, supporting the show here for well over the year. They're local, just like we're a local and independent podcasting. They're a local and independent uh, pizza station shop, whatever you want to call it. SliceOnBroadway.com if you want to check them out. PGH underscore Slice on the Twitters. And they're on Slice on Broadway on the Facebook and the Instagrams. You will be hungry, too. Some great stuff and great place for a meeting with our patrons that we get to meet up with here every once in a while. And uh, go check them out. SliceOnBroadway.com. Let them know you heard about them on the Awesome Cast and you're hungry, too. Uh, down in Carnegie, PA, or here in the South Hills of Pittsburgh in Beachview. All right. Susan, are we talking about Periscope? Uh, yeah, if you want to go there. <laughs> oh, you had a second thing too, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah. The the other thing is I'm a new grandma, and uh, That's right. That's right. and the uh, video calling on uh, on Facebook Messenger. <laughs> 
what's that recent discovery and so I get to um, have the cell phone at the other end licked by my grandson <laughs> <So> <laughs> everything is oh cool can I eat it but um, but he's very interested in uh, seeing people talking to him and that's it seems like the path of least resistance that mm -hmm. you don't have to log in or put in your name or go to a list or just hit up the little camera thing if you have Facebook Messenger on your uh, smartphone and with the joy of the front face facing uh, camera, you're you're on, you know. And uh, I don't know. My heart bleeds for people that, in the past, like if your if your daughter or your family moved away to California or heaven help you Australia, and they had kids, like it, you knew you were going to get mail, but it was like almost a death sentence on the um, on the family, but. Um, the, having the uh, video calls are are just so much, so much of a blessing to keep families together and to really see uh, people grow and change and and uh, and get that uh, nonverbal communication that's so important that you miss out even on telephone calls. Mm -hmm. So, I, I didn't know that it was so involved in even the uh, the app itself like i knew there was like you know we talked about beforehand about how it was like kind of like they have a skype kind of roll-in kind of thing but uh that that's cool I, and i think any of those that uh that kind of lower that barrier but, but but again i guess uh facebook is the most persistent thing isn't it yeah i mean unfortunately i sold my facebook stock and took a loss <laughs> you know so so now that i see that they have video calling i'm done they're darn i wish i would have hung on to it but uh, I felt pretty happy with myself when the stock went down to 18 and I sold it at 30. And you all know that's what it's pushing 90 right now. But I think this is a good sign for Facebook that they have such an easy uh, way for people to uh, video call each other. Interesting. Go ahead. With Messenger, I'm, I mean, I'm super interested in this because the 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 concept that that facebook can have with will facebook actually get rid of phone numbers um in a, in, a, in a much further off future state right if because messenger if everybody's on facebook messenger is is text chat it's video chat but it's also they support the voice side of things so i'm interested to see if they can actually make a run if they can get enough of the younger generations on messenger and get them using that do people need voice lines or a phone number attached to a cell phone or is it just going to be totally an, an ip based world where I, i'll just call them on facebook or i'll call them via their facebook identity um, that's one of the things i'm interested in is what's going to replace the concept of the of the phone number as we know it today Certainly. I, I kind of sat there and I was looking at, um, like, I go to hangouts.google.com, which, you know, promised kind of a similar thing. And then I realized, mm -hmm. like, like I don't know the mechanism for, okay, I go here instead of Google+. Plus. How do I find this person? And that's like a business person on the other end and say, how do I tell them to connect with me? You know, um, it's not as immediate as like, well, of course you have a Facebook a account, you know. It's like, well, you mm -hmm. have a YouTube account or something you know, and it's just not as smooth. It's like, oh, yeah, I got Facebook. I'm good. You know, um, at least I think for most people, it's that persistence that really kind of. There's a lot of people that leave their Facebook on all the time. And mm -hmm. um, it doesn't mean that they don't have a life, that they're just sitting in front of the desktop looking at Facebook. It just means that they have their messenger app running on their smartphone and they're off having a wonderful life but mm -hmm. it just means that you can message them just like text messaging only better because you don't have the number of character limits right. on it you know and you can you can carry on a conversation you don't have to say goodbye you can carry on a conversation that's open-ended with with messenger you know and this is just even the non-video part um, I yeah. accidentally called Eamon and now he's calling me back on Facebook. Uh, <laughs> hold on. We'll, we'll see how this goes. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, you can audio call them too. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. 
But well, and I've gotten audio phone calls over from Facebook over people that don't have my phone number. And it, it's it's a weird because your phone starts ringing and it's a weird ringtone that you've never heard before. And you're like, right. what, it, what, what's what going is on? What is this thing? Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and that's where, that's the, like I was saying, that's, that's where I wonder, it, what, will that kind of lead us to the next iteration of, of phone calling? I think somebody's going to... Somebody is going to try to copy that once they mm-hmm. realize how cool it is. They're not going to let Facebook be the only people. Well, it kind of happens to a point because, well, okay, so I, I'm at I'm at the the new office, and then this is the day that somebody really wanted to. <laughs> this is the one. This is he's he's like I did, Facebook told me I had a missed call from you. What's happening right now? I, I'm really confusing him. He's not on until at least nine o'clock tonight with me. So he is like, why are you calling me right now? Aren't you doing a podcast? Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, hi, Eamon. Um, but anyways, so so like I had. Um, the service is just horrible up there. We, I kept trying to do a call. They, the, somebody was trying to call me from Philly. I'm, I'm like, well, I guess I got to call him back, right? I didn't want to just not, you know, just leave it hanging. Um, as much as I still don't like sched- unscheduled calls, it's interrupting. It's interrupting. Um, but uh, I ended up having to call them back via Google Hangout on my phone over the Wi-Fi because it was more reliable. So, you know, I, I think that's a really interesting situation there. And also, hey, I have a reason never to pick up the phone because I know it's never going to work. So there's that. Um, but no, it's uh, and I also noticed as you mentioned the calling part. I've noticed there's an HD insignia by the phone, the audio phone part on uh, on on Facebook Messenger. I was wondering what that I guess is. I guess it's HD calling because it's over the Wi-Fi. It's going to be a higher fidelity, right? Mm-hmm. So, and I'm interested to see who's going to be the first place that does widespread video voicemail, mm-hmm. or well, I guess it wouldn't be video voicemail; it'd be video video mail. But if I can't connect to you, right? If if you don't pick up, can I leave you a video message instead of leaving you just a voice message? I've gotten them. I've gotten. Well, oh, will Facebook voice- do that? I. I think it must have been from Facebook. Somebody sent me a video message, Mm -hmm. you know, so. Well, you can also just take a video like in Facebook, too, and just just as a message to your your page, I think. Right. I know you can on Twitter. Here's an upload video. Well, that's where I don't I want it to be more of like the DM direct message or private. Kind of like how we can send audio messages over iMessage on the iPhones. I, exactly. That said a lot of things. And I can right do the there. same thing with video. Mm-hmm. I, I can do that on, on, but I'm looking for more widespread, something that I can use with the entire family, not just people that have the iPhone. Right. Not right. that I don't want everyone in the world to have an it's iPhone. Something, yeah, it it should, doesn't look like you can immediately take video and post it. Like you have to take, it'll do pictures right away, uh, but you'd have to take the video with your phone and then post it as a video. Right. Uh, it looks like. So I don't know. Um, I say cross is saying, imagine buying a phone with no number, you know, I, mm-hmm. they're trying to do this. I mean, the Google, uh, Google Fi is you are on whatever connection is stronger. If it's a cell connection, you're on that. If it's a Wi-Fi connection, you're on that. If it's another cell carrier, you're on that. It actually, it actually supports, I think both T-Mobile and Sprint. Right. Um, so I, I don't know. I think that's really interesting. Uh, and, and that kind of connects the dots of, yeah, we're getting away from this archaic number thing but you also have a device um that's really kind of tied to you at that point right so at least an account i guess so susan you had something else you were talking about about periscope too yeah i was a lucky uh student of mike sorg and the <laughs> podcast um on periscope and and i was pretty thrilled with it and uh i was wandering around the uh Colum- greater columbus convention center in a pre-conference meeting we were exploring rooms and where it would be the best hallways to use and things like that. And uh, and myself and Rob Ball, who's the sponsorship chair, uh, decided to periscope down the hall. And uh, if you bring up our Facebook page for Ohio Linux Fest and scroll back about 10 or 12 posts, you can see the periscope. It's just a, our first trial of uh, going back and forth and talking about... Uh, your staff hard at work at a high Linux fest. My hope is that for there's got to be a high percent of Twitter users who are at Ohio Linux fest, and uh, if they would use their Periscope and uh, show us, point to us where their their um, 
where their videos are, then we can somehow, you know, share them and and uh, really make the conference alive to the people that uh, aren't even there that can uh, see it as it happens live time. I, th I think you're going to see that too, like, because I, I did notice like events where events be there, there's a pre there's a before periscope and a post periscope for every event i've been to this year right and you're just like yep they're periscoping i went to a four-day concert there's periscopes everywhere of everything i went to we went to pod camp there's periscopes everywhere. somebody periscoped an entire extra breakout session that we didn't have cameras set up for so it's there and they captured it and and, and and it's posted and it's on the site you know um and i think i think you're gonna notice that a bit um i am I honestly think you're going to go into Linux Fest and be just like, wow, this is an entire element that wasn't here last year. Yeah. And uh, you'll be able to find a lot of that. So, yeah, it, 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 and it helps kind of cover everything, you know, Wizard Con, Wizard World Con a couple of weeks ago, Periscope during all the QAs. Somebody was holding, I was one of them, but uh, for, for a couple of them, but, you know, there was somebody so holding you, up their can phone. Can you put the hashtag in the Periscope and have it come up on the hashtag right. list? Right, yeah. exactly. It, you, it, it goes through as a tweet. So uh -huh. put your at Ohio Linux, put your uh, hashtag Ohio Linux, and yeah, it's all going to come up. Okay. So yeah, you're 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 good, you're real good. Um, uh, so you can it, it's not going to auto complete like if you're in Twitter, but as long as you know everything, spell it right, you'll be good. You'll be fine. You know, I've gone to that global list of of Periscope, and um, it's sort of like ham radio that you can like. <laughs> talk to somebody or, or see somebody talk. No, I guess you can't like talk to them exactly, but you can see somebody talking from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And um, that's really interesting. But like, there's still a lot of teenage girls just trying it, you know, or they're, you know, they're not, there's not a real high quality when you go to the global list. Right. A pair of and, and you know, I, so I have actually perused that list quite often just to see what's out there. And I have uh, from time to time and I've actually I've stumbled upon a lot of how to type stuff that I actually found very interesting. I think sort we talked about this a while back. I found that it was like a shoot dot edit one and it was someone that, that had had the camera on their their video editing and they were they were showing professional style video editing um i i've found people that are doing seamstress work i've i've found people like doing a lot of different cool stuff the trick is i guess just going back often and looking through those lists and perusing them and finding content that's meaningful to you and, and fortunately enough, right now the the list isn't too long that you can't you can't go through a lot of different places to try to try to find some some people streaming live. But but I will say if, if you didn't going through that list, if you didn't find something useful, I would check back at least I don't know give it give it a few more chances and, and see if you do find something that's meaningful to you because because like I said, I have by going back on occasion at different times, especially uh, weeknight evenings or, or middle of the afternoon on Saturday, I, I've found a couple people that are just showing what they do and what they do best and, and kind of doing that, that, that tutorial teaching type thing. And I, I, I would I, I would recommend going back and checking it out. Mm -hmm. And that's that's kind of what I've been trying to deliver. I actually did a Periscope about uh, correcting your Periscope video when you when you, when you filmed it sideways. Uh, so I was mm -hmm. like, hey, I'm going to Final Cut. I had to fix this for a client. I thought it'd be interesting to Periscope it. Here you go. Yeah. You know, and then and, and then it's also um, if you liked it, you can save it and throw it on YouTube, right? Uh, mm -hmm. you know, if just, and just say, you know, Hey, this is a periscope, sorry, it's vertical or whatever. Quality's not really good, but this is a thing that happened. And, uh, no, no, you're right. I, I think there's a lot of room for that. There's been a lot of discussion about, um, um, what's the value in it and in having a call to action. If you're like using it to sell something, you know, um, I could see, uh, you, you guys could be doing, um, um, periscope QAs about Linux, Ohio, Ohio yeah. Linux Fest, for instance, yeah. and say, hey, uh, the event's coming up here in a, a week and a half. Do you have any questions about Ohio Linux Fest or do you have any questions about Linux? You know, and just kind of put that out there. I, I think that could that would be a lot of fun. I would have thought I wish I would have thought of that going into PodCamp. 
<laughs> so That's good. But you know, I, I I think I think there's definitely that, and also I think it's just great to have fun with it. Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I, the best thing for me has been I've been pulling it up because at, at the end of these long Tuesday nights. I'm, I'm copying all the files over to this other computer. It takes me about 10, 15 minutes. And I end up having a really good conversation with somebody, you know, one side of their own ch- text chat or whatever about be a podcasting, be a pro wrestling. Cause that's a show that we just ended uh, at that, at that moment and, and, and having some good stuff there. Um, I wanted to touch base um, again, some fan stuff. Um, they were, uh, for their awesome thing of the week, uh, we asked it on Facebook and in the Facebook group, we had some people responding. Our friend Alex Cars, he's been talking to us uh, the last couple of weeks about how um, he has, he loves that Periscope is on Android now. He's been testing it with a newer phone that he has. I think it's the Moto M, if I recall, uh, out there in uh, around Long Beach, California. Um, he says his his awesome thing is noticing that Periscope now has broadcasting and landscape. Um, and, uh, of course, Doug Dirt, I had to point out, uh, yesterday when I was periscoping from sheets, let me clarify that mm-hmm. I was periscoping from the new sheets drive through that makes it important. Okay. <laughs> um, so no, I just had the experience and they pu- had me pull up cause I had a big order cause I was ordering for everybody that, uh, uh, back here at home. And, uh, and yeah, I, Hey man, they put a sheets with a drive through on the way to my one Where? driving Where? gig out there on 22 out uh, by uh, uh, going into Murraysville. Uh-huh. Uh, you get off that, that exit up uh-huh. by Monroeville and it's right there, uh-huh. right there for the drive home for the, for the munching on my way home. Cause I'm usually too busy on Mondays anyways. It's, it's, it's a whole other thing. Um, but it's a height of laziness when you make her go across like, I didn't go in, and I'm just going to watch you go across to the store and grab a bottle of something that I ordered. <laughs> you know, it just doesn't, I don't know. <sighs> yeah, but will they let you put the little hazelnut chickers in your coffee <laughs> in the drive through I don't know. Probably <laughs> not, no, since they're making it for you. So, But it's also, I always end up making a mess of my coffee one way or another. So uh, we'll let them do that. So uh, there's the periscopy things. So we also have uh, some notes. Uh, uh, Doug Durda, he keeps me apprised abri- ab- of all the uh, social media things throughout the week. And we had a lot of Facebook stuff come across if, this, uh, if my links will work here. And they're not. Uh, so maybe you saw this. Uh, Facebook's like buttons will soon track your web browsing to target ads. Isn't that what the reason we put uh, like buttons on all of our web pages anyways? Not the sole reason, but I mean, we knew this was coming, right? Yeah, and and people have to continue to make money and be able to target ads. And it, obviously, we live in an ad based world. So, th- to your point, this is this is no huge surprise to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I would, and and here here's the thing. So, and I've I've heard this. Uh, I, I've heard the the conversation of ads has has come up over and over and over again over the last few days since iOS 9 launched because of all the ad blocking capabilities. People have built ad blockers. People have already made, and I think three hours made $126,000 in, in, in revenue from their ad blocker and then quickly pulled it and gave, gave all the money back because they felt bad. Mm-hmm. Um, here's my take on that, and it's I'm sure I'm going to be probably some single unique person. I would rather have a targeted ad. I don't want an ad for Lanesta or whatever, whatever the, the different medications that are on in the oh. evenings. I, oh. I, I don't want those ads. You can, I'll, I'll be, I'll be happy. I'll be more than happy to watch an Android commercial at every commercial break. And I'd probably actually watch the same one over and over and over again. Mm-hmm. And, and I'd be completely content with watching that ad. Same goes for Apple ads. And, and if it's an ad for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. or Gotham or, or whatever TV show, I would, I would be more than happy to watch targeted ads. Don't give me a bunch of ads for something I'm not interested in or I'm never going to buy. Right, right. Uh, we'll see. We'll see. Fa- Facebook is doing fine. I'm sorry you got rid of your stock, Susan. <laughs> and, and, and the, the other thing about ads is, is don't show me especially on on a, in our browser don't show me uh, and amazon is famous for this don't show me ads for something i already bought right I, right I, <laughs> right right like i i just bought tapes for a shoot that later this week and they're just like mini dv tapes like the most planned thing and now i have an in the email a bunch of extra 
You know, it's like, well, here's 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 a different configuration of the multiple tapes you just bought, or here's the higher grade version of the tapes you just bought. It's like, great, I could have used that before, you know, or I didn't because I get these same tapes every time. Exactly. Speaking of Amazon, we had a message from our friend uh, Matt Matt Weller out there on the other end of the state, I believe, uh, of the former awful show, the former Nero. He says, for me, is uh, uh this trumps Apple's entire announcement. The Fire 7-inch display Wi-Fi 8 gigabyte. By the way, it's $50. And by the way, it comes in a six-pack. For 200 The six-pack you get, for, it comes in at like $46. Yeah, what? No, it's like $250 for six of them. So you get one free. If I read right. Yeah, pretty much. That's what I'm saying is if you buy six, yeah, they, they, they're cheaper than the $50 mark. So, so yeah, um... Uh, if other people are looking to buy this and want to go on on a six pack, let me know. Uh, uh, I think my <laughs> I think my Christmas shopping has been taken care of here. So uh, and I think it even comes in like a little carrier, like a six pack like box or something uh, with these things. And that's, that's amazing. Now, this isn't going to be your high end, crazy, holy crap thing. It's not a full on Android. Uh, it, it's their version fire OS kind of thing, but, uh, there's a lot of stuff in that app store. And uh, this is the thing. Um, this is the, um, um, the one I would give to the people I would worry about with an Android device, like the people that will get in trouble with a windows machine people, um, people, mm -hmm. moms, let's, let's be, let's be honest, moms, right? Other than mom just went and bought an iPad, so I don't have to worry about that. Uh, but so it's still, for everybody else, like, you kind of have them covered, and that's not too bad, you know? I usually scoff at these, like, oh, Black Friday, buy somebody a, three, a $600 TV. I'm like, who are you? who's buying a $600 TV for, like, all their friends or for all their family or whatever, you know? It's like one person gets a big gift in my family, and then <laughs> we move on next year. Um, but uh, if that... Uh, but no, I think I think we're going to spread the tablet love, and I'm pretty sure none of my family actually listens to my podcast, so it's still a secret. Um, so, um, but it, it, we've completely commoditized the laptops, or I'm saying the, the 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 tablets, and it's and it's okay. I mean, like like you're getting six of them for less than I think any iPad you can get at this point. Uh, no, it was just about any iPad, all but one model, and you don't want that one probably. So, so I'm interested to see how how these how the I can't imagine them not doing well. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in in seeing how long they keep the OS updated and and whatnot. And and one of the reasons I'm interested in this is because we have no Kindle devices in the house, and the only way you can use the full on lending library is to have an actual Kindle brand device you can't just use it in the kindle app unless they've recently changed that um so that's why i'm actually interested in the the the, the kindle brand how much is like just a regular kindle at this point because if it's 50 bucks for a full-on tablet it's still like 80 bucks for a kindle <laughs> six inch. yeah but i bet you i bet you like the paper white is still an expensive device yeah, the I mean, paper, paper white one. Inch, the, the battery life's not going to be that on on what some of the other devices are. Right, yeah. right. I mean, this is a different level, I guess. So it's a yeah. better to It's for it's for reading, as this says right here. It's for reading. I don't know. Uh, no, I I think it's great. I, I think it's awesome. And 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 again, yeah, it's a really kind of limited down OS, but I think that's perfect for. And it's on Linux. <clears throat> <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but that's exactly a thing. It was a it was a divergent of Android, which is something they're allowed to do in, in the Linux world. So and uh, do something different and special and and specialized for, for Amazon's <laughs> needs, which is buy more, which is completely <laughs> buy more Amazon stuff. But still, you know, if you live in that world, just like we live in the Apple world for some of us. Right. 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 Chilla? Oh, definitely. I mean, a six. Well, here a six inch high res built in lighting Wi-Fi paper paper white mm -hmm. six inch is 120 bucks uh a kraus kraus is going to go in with you on the uh six pack by the way so um i think you can mostly count me in as well uh so <laughs> just crack it open like we should have a beer party to crack it open you know have it's, <laughs> and, it's, and, it's, and it's a it's a kindle a lot of specs do, do you know is there the um is there a front-facing camera there that? is there is 
And I don't think they don't. I don't think any of them have a high end one. They are all VGA. So well, so. that's okay mm-hmm. to to get your point across and to. to no, that's yeah, fine. Wow. That's I fine. just got really dark. My one of the light bulbs burned out. Speaking of, um, <laughs> chill is in the dark. We'll light them up here. <laughs> Uh, but first, hey, uh, if you guys are out there, if you're a media, if you need media services, we got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, the soon to be rebranded Sorgatron Media Media Services. Um, if you guys need video production, editing, events, sports, promotional, professional wrestling, or real wrestling, or whatever the case may be, uh, we also do social media podcast development, uh, including you know, the ones we're doing with our friends Seclair and Fishing Without Bait, website development. Yep, we can do that too. I'll be honest, it's going to be Squarespace, but if you can't handle that, we can give you a hand there. Check out, drop us a line, contact page over at SorgatronMedia.com. Dig through there. Check out our YouTube page for samples of videos or uh, or send me an inquiry. I'll send you something specific depending on what you're looking for. We do a little bit of everything. It's not just hobos, uh, ho- dirty hobos in my basement all the time. Okay, guys? Uh, we, we, we do corporate videos too. Uh, so and we can do a hobo corporate video even. So, uh, so please go check that out. Now we're going to take a look last week at Sorgatron Media and be right back. I can have Stephen Merchant as Wheatley have a conversation with Peter Capaldi as the Doctor. Yeah, with Scooby Doo. <laughs> Scooby Doo, Wheatley, and Doctor Who can sit down and have a cup of tea, ale, uh, Scooby snacks, or whatever oil, whatever Wheatley drinks. In the DeLorean. In the DeLorean <laughs> that could be parked outside of the TARDIS and said, hey, you know, uh, CM Punk needs a shirt to wear on TV when he wore the I Broke Big Show's hand shirt. <laughs> so we printed that shirt and he wore it on TV, and that was kind of the beginning of the relationship. From that point uh, on, Colt was contacting my boss, you know, saying that he wanted to make some of his own shirts that he could go and sell at shows. And that kind of snowballed into what the business is now. In June of 2013, they officially launched Pro Wrestling Peace together. We've got an yep. HD camera, six axis gyro, so the drone it can do flips and whatnot. The range is 300 feet, gets up to 45 miles an hour. You can download an app onto your phone so the camera can live stream. It also comes with a virtual reality headset. So say you're streaming on your phone, you just put your phone in a headset, then you can wear it so while you're flying you're seeing what the drone is seeing. What's great about it being modular is that um, every single part is going to be online. You can swap parts in and out and then as more accessories are available, you can always attach them onto the drone. Uh, right. So by the time we got to it, we were freaking hyped and we're like, oh my god, he did it! And then... don't, don't, don't use that word. What? Hyped. <laughs> I'll Major use Raleigh it. Will bust through that wall. <laughs> Kool Aid man, he's gonna Kool Aid right through this wall behind me and, and kill my dead owl. Uh, anyways, he said, hey, three more times, he's gonna go behind you and kill my dead owl. <laughs> Your desktop, when you turn it on. And you try to boot it and it goes bleep, but then it doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't do anything. No, it doesn't boot at all. It's just like an empty screen. Is that like the end of your computer? More than likely. Like if you didn't even see a bio screen. Yeah, there was that's no a problem. That's a problem. There was no. Even that's what happened to that one over there. Screen. I'm like, I'm like, that thing can't be dead. It's yeah. like a Pentium D, not the, not the iMac, the, 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 the boring box over there uh <laughs> well i've had i've had this warning message for two years on this computer mm-hmm. that my hard drive was about to fail but since it like <laughs> you know did not fail for two years i figured i was you know okay. did you have things on more than just the hard drive yeah i had some on the thumb drive but i had a, right. a password file that i've changed some passwords since i made the password file so so i'm not totally screwed but um, then oh. I have this thing called Nemo and Seagate, and I don't know if I'm really subscribed to them or not, but I know they used to be on the computer, and I don't know, I don't have the product key, and I don't know how to access it since the computer's dead. So, <laughs> this is the problem with PCs. Yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> what well, do where, I this have? Is where I think the app stores are really coming into play, and I've, I, I will say, not just from the the Apple side from the the microsoft side as well i've recently been testing out some microsoft tablets um and the ability that you have with with both apple and microsoft and 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 with android as well right um 
you click a button, you sign in with your app store log on and you say, install all my apps and boom, they all come down and they're trying to find the old disc or an old key or whatever is, is no longer a, a, a big ordeal, right? You can, you can quickly and easily just reinstall the application. And based on the fact that you're signing as you to the app store, that's what gives you the right to use it. Um, but the big I, thing I, I is going to be certain app developers are having issues um, figuring out how to work their, their, their software development lifecycle and their versioning and how do I get people to pay to upgrade like I used to. Um, but I, I think it, it, all in all, it's making it easier and more acceptable for people to buy software and and I think we just need to get more people accustomed to it's not just ninety nine cents it's the big software mm-hmm. and and I think it'll it it'll work itself out but I I think those the, those days of the PC world now that now that Windows tens here I think we're going to see more and more the the box disk key type stuff going away right right it, it's, but it's also going to be how much the, yeah the manufacturer participates right mm-hmm. so. We'll see. I just kind of went with this because that was a good discussion. So we're just kind of yeah, come back okay. from break. We'll go check out everything at uh for that little preview of everything going on. And my dog is going nuts. My dog is mad at Windows 2. Uh, but uh, let's get into it. So I want to roll these stories together because, again, kind of more Facebook talk. Uh, one, they're going to have a new ad service that charges only after a full scroll which is going to kind of change a little bit of the ad industry there. Uh, Facebook is also expanding its workplace social network to hundreds of companies. So think, I'm guessing, Google Apps for Facebook stuff. They're already using it internal, internally, from what I understand. And Facebook Signal is a news-finding tool for journalists. Um, Facebook is busy, you guys, and in some interesting new, can we call them verticals, I guess? Uh, Facebook's going to be in your, in your business is of course working on the ads, which is their bread and butter. Um, and, uh, and, and they're actually trying to really get into the journalism thing. I mean, we've had the news stuff, much like the news app, which Chilla, you're right. I love the news app on iOS nine, uh, completely. (laughs) It's my go-to. It's so easy. It's not crash prone and weird like Feedly has been. Um, but it doesn't have everything, but that's okay. If it's not on there, it's not, it's dead to me now. Um, well, and you can, there's, there's a way you can add the news. Okay. It's just not not as like nicely formatted, I guess. Right. Yeah, it well, and it comes to they'll pull from their RSS feed and they'll try to use their their reader view. Mm-hmm. So if you, it, check it out. I, there's definitely a way to find uh, the majority as long as they're doing an RSS feed. Right. Um, Good. So so I'm gonna be doing that, which means I'll never be able to w- read the news on any other device or my Android <laughs> tablet. Um, but okay. Okay, Apple, you got me. Uh, it's it's pretty, and you win. And and there's no uh, Google Reader uh, to be to be you know out there. The the one thing that surprised me was that, that they added silently too was that in in the, in the Safari browser, mm-hmm. they save as PDF in iBooks. You can take an entire website and save it off as a PDF. That doesn't seem right. I actually paid a dollar ninety nine for an app just so I could do that. <laughs> Well, you, okay. Well, that's wow. What was the name of that app? Which the one that you saved a whole website as a PDF? PDF printer. Oh, okay. Oh, wow. Um, there, 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 there's a perfect case of Sherlocking. Uh, with, with yeah, baking that right mm-hmm. in. PDF printer still has a couple additional options and a couple, couple nice, n- nice add-on features that you don't get with just the save as PDF and iBooks. But for the for the bare bones, you want to take a page that you think might go away. Um, and I've done that quite often. You're, you're worried that, that someone's, someone wrote an article and there's there's something in it that, that has kind of leak information um, and you want to make sure you kind of get a copy of it. That That's kind of how I've been doing it is throwing it in there and letting it save it as off as a PDF. So, that's on Android um, too, on Android. I mean, it, it's not an iPhone specific app. You can get um, I don't know. Can app of the on? week. There it is, Sorg. PDF. <laughs> app of the week. <laughs> Check it out. PDF printer. Um, well, hey, I got, since, you know, our, our guest, it's very appropriate this week that we learned 
that uh, according to Wired over here, whoa, Microsoft's using Linux to run its cloud. Uh, Microsoft Azure, which is a lot of stuff is running on, I think a little bit of Cortana, uh, some, some services and backend rendering for the uh, Xbox uh, One in, in recent in the recent year. And it's actually its own distribution. Microsoft has its own distribution of Linux that it's running on its service. Um, They've been talking about this and being open source and, and dedicating to the open source platforms for several, several years. And this is really, uh, we, we talked about on, on the other show, how's Microsoft, you know, uh, make, you know, what's their kind of pricing scheme for Windows? Um, they're not making money for Windows per se. It's services like this. And this is them really kind of building those servers on Linux now. Um, I think that's really telling. It's, it's very telling uh, that, that, that they've, they've, they're definitely a new, new Microsoft if they've gone this far with it. Yeah, I mean, they definitely have a, uh, I guess, less contentious relationship. Um, I don't know if that has to do with, you know, management changes or whatever, but uh, uh, you've seen some cooperation on the, the, the virtualization front, uh, I think, with the, some of the hypervisors and stuff like that that now interoperates a little bit better. So, you know, we, we're we happy to work with them, as, you, know, <laughs> you know, bring them along, just, just you know. It's uh, it'll just take baby steps, I guess. One of my biggest gripes with Microsoft, though, is you're buying a new computer or laptop, and and the Microsoft Word, or the Office suite is is a trial version, and then you then they hold you up at gunpoint like ninety days later to spring for another hundred or two bucks for the for the Office. Well, you know? now it's a monthly subscription. So. Yeah, yeah. So you never exactly own it. Yeah, mm -hmm. Sprint wants to do that too. They want you to never exactly buy your phone. Well, Just that's, that's pack all of them. Your your that, phone fee right, in right. the in the service. I don't like that either. That's that's a Creative Cloud. Honestly, mm -hmm. I, I love it for Creative Cloud, mm -hmm. and uh, and actually, it's been very handy for Office for us to have as somebody operating a small business that doesn't have a lot of cash flow. Um, it's a lot easier to pay that $10 a month and always get the update and have it on every device and, and, or whatever limit is for computers than dropping the, oh, I got to pay 800 bucks for Adobe or I need to buy office for 500 bucks or whatever that price was. Mm -hmm. Um, it just, well, yeah, you use open source then. I, I had <laughs> quite a number of people had a rude awakening when I was teaching, uh, first year students in RN to BSN, um, finishing mm -hmm. program that um, they hadn't been to college for many decades and they, they ran out for their first course and got a new laptop and lo and behold, their office suite wasn't, um, wasn't included. I mean, it was as a trial version, but then they would have to pay for it. You know, I did tell them about open office, but um, I also told them like about Google docs, about yeah. making uh, documents in there. But um when you think about it, the, the, in my mind, the computer started out as a replacement for the typewriter. Mm -hmm. You went from typewriter to uh, word processing, and then you had WordPerfect on a uh, DOS prompt kind of thing that you uh, loaded that in so that you could type um, your uh, thesis or something like that on it. And, and, to, and to have a computer without a fully functioning, yeah, this is it, this, you bought this with the computer word processing part is, 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 uh, irrational to me. It's like buying a Barbie doll with a bathing suit on and no other clothes for the Barbie doll to wear. I mean, Mattel tried that many years ago to try to sell a lot of Barbie clothes and they ended up doing that. And that's what Microsoft does with selling um, the other uh, software that you need to mm -hmm. uh, fully function it as a typewriter. You know, you can't use it unless you... But and in, in, in comparison, of course, uh, uh, Ubuntu comes with OpenOffice. And also, uh, mm -hmm. you get pages when you get a Mac. So there's a yeah. fully functional word process. And, and to be fair, there is uh, what Notepad. I guess there's Notepad. Uh, word, Word. Right, right. <laughs> right. What's the what's the what's the mini and, but word? Don't forget, don't forget, they don't have they don't have OS wide spell check. So Oof. Oof. you're not you're not getting spell check in that. You're yeah, you're better off to, to the point made earlier. Go or, use Google yeah. Docs or yeah. or something along those yeah. lines. In related the, the, news, uh, Office Microsoft Office 2016 is here today. Uh, Chilla, did you put this? 
Yeah, I, I put that in there. And the, the one interesting thing that I've seen, obviously, is a lot of newer devices come with a one year free of office. Mm-hmm. Um, so you get one year subscription. Mm-hmm. And it, it was interesting, because I actually almost picked up a hundred dollar or it was an $89 Windows tablet. It was some like <laughs> Polaroid or it was a very generic low end Windows 10 la- like tablet, but it came with a free year of, of office. Mm-hmm. And the interesting thing was, is so for the price of office, I can also get for the price of office for a year, I can also get a free well, actually, tablet. isn't it isn't it um, uh, for less than the price of Office? You bought that tablet. It and was a personal. It was a personal copy, and I think okay. personal was what seventy bucks. Yeah, I think it is something so like. So it was that. like it was like a ten dollar tablet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. It wasn't the family. It, Which, it wasn't the the full full on subscription. But it's interesting to see what they're doing, and, and they're they, to me that they, they're actually in this twenty sixteen that that, that that launched today. They're they're launching some of the capabilities that that Google had had kind of had the corner of the market on with. The, the, they're offering co-authoring um, to the point where even their their Skype for business client has a start a co-author conference. Um, so it's it's pretty interesting that, that you can tell they're definitely going after the the Google Docs collaboration world. Um, so I'm excited to see what they come out with over the, over the remainder of the year. Um, obviously, they're they're pretty much on a on a, like a three year life cycle. Mm-hmm. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they come out with, and then what we what we get in another three years. Awesome. So uh, an update from the chat room: uh, Alex Cars has joined us. We talked about him earlier in his uh, Periscope. Uh, escapades uh, but uh, he, he just kind of showed up and has no idea he's like I don't know what we're talking about and Cross is still trying to get him in on the six pack idea with the fire tablets <laughs> so this is an ongoing thing he's all about this idea I love it I love the enthusiasm <laughs> in the chat room right now uh, all right so uh, hey the calendar here coming up of course eating with pod camp and international pod camp day pod camp no well yeah that'd be awesome uh international uh-huh. podcast day is actually next wednesday september 30th uh so that fits very nicely we're going to be talking with buzzy from epicast uh about podcasting and there may be something extra special i just got a hey do you want to do this thing and i'm like sure i'll do this thing and now i have to figure out how to do that thing uh so once i know figure out what that thing is and have a plan in action you'll hear about it. i think we're going to be doing something fun for international podcast day uh so chili you got to call off work so we can podcast uh okay. <laughs> hey maybe may man maybe uh also uh myself i'm going to be doing a podcasting lunch and learn if you're uh, more of a business type and want to get into the nuts and bolts of podcasting especially what the heck does this microphone do and how do i connect to my computer uh that's something that we're going to get into next thursday you can find information on that at sorgatronmedia.com and sorgatron.com just look for the lunch and learn and nuts and bolts and info on that evening with podcamp is at podcamppittsburgh.com there was more stuff Stuff in here that I thought I saved into the document. Thrival Festival is happening if you're in the Pittsburgh area. Look up the Thrival, just look up Thrival Festival on the uh, Googles. There's a lot of free events. A lot of them are being streamed. It kind of caught me by surprise. And then there's a music festival this weekend. Uh, like I said, go to workhardpgh.com. Um, they have a stream of today's events at least. Uh, I don't know who's doing the rest of them because other venues are are doing the rest of the week's events. Um, but there's even there's a healthcare day actually on, on Thursday talking about innovation in healthcare. Uh, I was trying to get some of my colleagues to go to it. Um, but uh, I say a lot of them free events. Uh, so go go over there. You can still sign up for, for a lot of them. Limited seating, but again, mostly free um, for that. Uh, we had a Microsoft event coming up that I know that Kraus was telling me about. I believe that was October 8th. Is that sound about October right? 6th. October 6th. Uh, scroll down a couple, couple frames to upcoming and awesome. Microsoft's making their announcement October Oh, that's 6th. where it went. That's where all the cool stuff went. Thank you, Shilla. <laughs> and then Google makes their announcement uh, a few days prior on September 29th. And that should be uh, the stuff we're hearing about. Oh, so that's uh, actually before the show next week. Uh, so we'll have, hopefully, info on the new uh, Chromecast. And was there something else they were talking about? Uh, Chromecast new Nexus devices, and I think we're going to see two. We're going to see one from Huawei and mm-hmm. one from L. I think LG is on the hook mm-hmm. for a device this year. For from a Nexus perspective, I'm interested. I miss the 
you have a Nexus 7. I have a Nexus 7. I think we know a lot of people with with Nexi 7s, mm. um, Nexus Cs. I, I don't know what the plural of that is, but um, I'm, I'm interested. I hope they go back and do refresh the 7-inch device. Um, they kind of went to the 9-inch platform and never looked back at the 7, um, which kind of falls in between their larger phone because they have a 6-inch phone. Um, but that being said, I hope they, they do a refresh to the Wi-Fi only tablet because I really enjoy that device. Um, well, I think they're going to launch Marshmallow, so you're going to see Marshmallow on your price start to, to go out to those devices. Um, you hit the Chromecast. I'm wondering if there's going to be another TV, the Nexus TV, the mm-hmm. puck looking thing, because I saw Best Buy had them 50% off this week. Um, Microsoft's announcement will be new surface, new phones, new wearable, um, Krauss help brother out here. Cause I'm sure I'm missing something. Lots of stuff. We'll go over it. Yeah, <laughs> that's fine. All right. And also of course, Ohio Linux fest, October Yay. 2nd and 3rd final pitch. Get them there. Yeah. Well, I, I wanted to mention real quickly that, uh, we have a workshop on Friday that's new. It's called the alley skills workshop mm-hmm. and it's for, um, including uh, trying to, uh, help look at including women, uh, people of diversity, people that are challenged, how to, how to get them involved in, um, in it and, and in, uh, uh Linux and open source and, and uh, that's a really great uh, program. It, there was a hundred thousand dollar grant that started the uh, investigation to make this uh, workshop, and uh, it's it's going to be uh, really well thought out. Really, so if you're into, especially if you're into human resources, or if you're a manager and you're and you'd like to see uh, bring more diversity and and bring up women in the in the workplace that. At Alley Skills Workshop is is a, is a maybe once in a lifetime or you know opportunity to uh, take advantage of some really um, uh, incredible uh, training and it's only two and a half hours Friday afternoon comes with the free package you have to double opt in for it so uh, and we also have a discount on the LPI uh, certification for uh, uh, registrants it's a big discount only ninety nine dollars for uh, LPI certification. You take it at your convenient uh, LPI certification testing center, and we do have an LPI cram course uh, in the professional training that's uh, discounted to three hundred and fifty dollars for all day with the new two thousand fifteen objectives. So I wanted to get that in at the last minute. <laughs> awesome! Awesome. So go check that out uh, and uh, check out everything awesomecast.net. Subscribe to us and so much more. Um, and uh, check out our social medias. Check out the awesome chat with these guys talking a little more about Linux and Ohio Linux Fest. And, um, and and follow us throughout the week. We have a lot of stories, a lot of things going on. Uh, so check out for at Chilla on the Twitters. John Chill on the Facebooks, and I will be hopefully in Studio A next week because yes. I got something big to bring in. <gasps> something a big. Forklift. So, oh no, oh no, <laughs> just back it up to the back door here. And Susan Advance oh, at Ohio Linux for the tweeters. And, and pound you. Ohio Linux and for the up. hashtag. That's right, hashtag Ohio Linux. Thank you so much to our awesome chat room has been joining us live.awesomecast.net and trying to get me to get in on the six packs of Amazon Fires all night long. And uh, at that point, thank you to that awesome chat room. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.